She's all packaged up and ready to go to the fair. She has her Mad Hatter hat on. She's going to be a donation dog. Here is a side view. The back. And the other side. Here is a close-up of the Mad Hatter hat and the Style 1 crochet border collie. You can see how the fake fur yarn makes it look really real. Here is a side shot of the dog. This is Style 1, has her Queen of Hearts backpack. Here is the back of the dog. Style 1 dog with the hat on. The Queen of Hearts backpack. And here is the other side. And then actually, you have the Queen of Hearts and the King of Hearts playing cards the button that's holding the Queen of Hearts backpack in place and again this is style 1 crochet border collie here is a close-up of the Mad Hatter hat that I made the clock timepiece opens up you can put pictures on the inside I have four safety pins to help hold it in place and it also has ties that you can tie a bow under the chin of the dog. You have the tea set on top that can come off. I made it so you can remove it. All the pieces are removable. The mirror included can come out as well. And then on the back I have the little frozen doll that looks like Alice. To make the Mad Hatter crochet dog hat, I used my J or 6mm crochet hook. I also used a pair of scissors and my tapestry needle. The yarn that I used for the hat is Karen Simply Soft. Here's some information about the yarn. The color is Dark Sage. For the orange in the hat, I used Red Heart Super Saver. Here's some more information on the yarn. The color is carrot. I used four safety pins to help hold the hat in place. One in the front, one in the back, and one on each side of the hat. That way you, don't, you can take the hat off and it won't be a permanent part of the dog. I started with my green yarn and we're going to start with magic circle. You just take the yarn and drape it across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook, go right through under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop. 
Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Now you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. There's one. Here's three. And the last one, six single crochet. Then you're going to take your forefinger and your thumb. You're going to take and hold the six single crochet at the base, just like this. You have the two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. And then take that loose yarn in and pull on that. Then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12. So two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12. And then this is how my work looks so far. Now I'm just going to close the center of the magic circle. Just turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end. And then that will close up the center of the magic circle nicely. Then take your yarn marker. Oops, place it right where you left off. And we're going to start our increase rounds. For the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. For the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn mark. So now you can see that we're sequentially getting bigger and bigger as we make each increase round. We're increasing the number of stitches as we work. We're going to keep increasing. I'm not going to show you each round now so that you know what we're doing. For the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth. And you're going to keep increasing for each round. The next one will be one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth. And you're going to keep increasing until you get to the round where you make one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the ninth stitch. This is how my work looks after I finished my last increase round of one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the ninth stitch. And you're going to need two of these. One of them will be for the bottom of the hat, and then one will be for the top portion of the hat. So you'll make them exactly the same way. But when you're making the top part of the hat, we're going to continue on. For the bottom part of the hat, you'll go ahead and slip stitch and finish off. So I'm going to show you how to make a slip stitch. You're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop to finish off. Then you would just cut the yarn. But since I'm continuing on, I'm going to go ahead and move the yarn marker up for one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So go ahead and make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. And then come back. Then after you finish your one round of one single crochet into every stitch, go ahead and move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into eight stitches. Then 
you're going to make your decrease stitch. So you're going to go into your next stitch over, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. You're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. One single crochet into eight stitches, then a decrease stitch. And repeat that all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then After come back. After you finish that decrease round, go ahead and move your yarn marker up for one round of one single crochet in every stitch. So just one round of just one single crochet in every stitch around. Then, when you've reached your yarn marker, you're going to take and get a piece of cardboard. You can measure it in your other bottom piece, and you just want to cut a hexagon, six sides, so that it fits right on the inside of the hat because you're going to place that on the inside so it creates a flat appearing top. So you'll just position it in there before you stuff or start getting too far down. So you can go ahead and put it in there now if you want. That way it's easier to keep inside there. But if it's easier for you just to work without it in there right now, you can do that. But eventually you're going to need that in the hat to help keep that flat appearance if you like that for the top of the hat. Another thing you can do to keep the cardboard into the top of the hat is you can punch a hole with your tapestry needle right through the center. You can make two of them. And just widen it just a little bit. That way you can take the center loose yarn in that you have in the center of the hat. Just put that loose yarn in onto your tapestry needle. And then you can take and bring it through position it how you want on the inside. Then you can tie a knot. So I tied a little bit of a knot and then I'm just going to go right through the other hole and then I'm going to go back in. I'm going to try to go right back in where I have the other hole. But it makes too much of a gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right through so here you can see how I went just a small stitch so you can't tell on the outside but I still came in through the hole that I created and then I can just tie a knot And then you can just bring the loose yarn in underneath the cardboard to hide it. And that will keep the cardboard in place as you crochet. And also, even when you stuff it, it'll keep it there securely. Then for the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches and then your decrease stitch, repeating that pattern all the For way For the around. next round, we're not going to make a round of one single crochet in every stitch. We're going to do another decrease round. For this decrease round, is one single crochet into six stitches, and then your decrease stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. For the next round, it's going to be another decrease round. You're going to make one single crochet into five stitches, and then make your decrease stitch. Then the last decrease round will be one single crochet into four stitches and then your decrease stitch. Now go ahead and move 
your yarn marker up after that last increase round and now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed 12 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Then you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the hat onto the bottom piece. Now you can go ahead and stuff with craft stuffing into the inside. This of the is top how my hat. hat looks after putting the stuffing inside so it still holds its shape at the top of the hat. Now you're going to want to center your hat onto the bottom piece. It might help to put a safety pin on the opposite side of the long end that you left for sewing. That way it won't move as you're sewing around. Once you have it centered, and you can see how I have the safety pin on the opposite side so that it stays in place, then you can take and sew the top hat to the bottom rim. Just going in and out with your tapestry needle and just sewing it in place. Now for the orange part of the hat, you're just going to take your orange yarn, colored yarn, and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, just place it right through the loop. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain. One, two, and finish making a chain of six. Then you're going to hold that last stitch with your thumb and your middle finger and you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. That's going to count as your first double crochet for the next row. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the fourth stitch from the hook, which is the stitch that you're holding. Go ahead and yarn over, go into that stitch that you're holding bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, two loops remaining, yarn over and go through two. Then you're just going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across. I have two more. This is how your work should look. Now you're going to chain three again. Turn your work. And you're not going to work into the base of that chain three. You're going to work into the next stitch over. So you just yarn over. Go into that next stitch over and you're just going to keep making one double crochet into every stitch back across. And then when you reach the end, you're going to chain three, turn your work, and then make one double crochet in every stitch across. Now when you reach the end here, you may think that you're done, but you actually have one last double crochet on the end that needs to have a double crochet. So on the bottom you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So on the top you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you need one more. So don't forget your last stitch. Make sure that for each row you have seven double crochet and then you'll have a straight edge on both sides. So go ahead, finish making one double crochet in every stitch just like I've shown you and then when you come back I'll show you how long mine, mine is. Mine is 15 rows. So 15 rows of one double crochet 
in every stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the strip on the hat. So now you're going to take the orange strip and fold the bottom, just the two double crochet up. So two of the double crochets along the bottom, just fold that up. That way you can put the cards or whatever it is you want to use to decorate your hat right in those in that space. And when you sew it onto the hat, make sure that you sew it right along the bottom so that you still have a little space there. And what I did was just position it onto the hat just like this. Then you're going to take and just paper clip the other side of the hat. Another thing you can do is just take your tapestry needle and just sew the back first. So sew the two pieces together. Just make sure that you have that folded in portion at the bottom. And then you just sew the back first right down the center. Then sew along the bottom of the hat. Don't sew along the top if you want to decorate. Then once I've positioned, after I've sewn the two ends together and positioned the strip along the bottom of the hat, then I'm just going to sew right along the bottom all the way around the hat, leaving the, op the top part open so I can stick the cards and other things to decorate the The hat. first thing I did is just place the 10-6 on the side of the hat and the nice thing about using felt is you can just take and sew it in place just take and go through the felt to sew it in place on the hat so it doesn't come off you don't have to put too many stitches just enough to keep it in place and then just tie a knot and bury the loose yarn and that way it will stay in place and won't come out. So that's the basic hat and you can decorate it however you want. I'm going to show you how I decorated mine and some of the items that I chose to decorate it with. One of the things I decided to use is my fairy tale lock it. And this is how much I got it half off and this I found at Hobby Lobby and this will open up. You can put pictures on the inside. I'm not going to put any pictures in this one. The reason I chose it of course is for the timepiece on the front. I'm going to use my elastic gold cord that I have left over for the clock. I'm going to use one of my wooden keys from Madeira. This beautiful decoration is actually a button by Lamode. Here's more information about the button. The next items that I have are all from the Dollar Tree Dollar Store. I thought this looked more like a nice Alice in Wonderland or Mad Hatter type of um, toy to go with the dog. And when you shake this one, it lights up. I was looking for a small doll that looked like Alice for the Mad Hatter. And this one worked perfectly even though it's frozen. I'm going to include a couple of fun games to go inside the Queen of Heart backpack for the dog. And again, these are from the Dollar Tree. Of course, I had to get the playing cards. These are also from the Dollar Tree. And you need your Queen of Hearts and the King of Hearts. I'm going to include this little beauty play set, mainly for the mirror, for the Mad Hatter hat. 
but I'm going to include all these others into the Queen of Hearts back there. Then there was this adorable little tea set that I'm going to include as well. I'm going to take the cards, the King of Hearts and the Queen of Hearts, and just place it right behind the 10-6. I'm not going to sew these down because I want them to be able to go back with the playing card set. So I'm just loosely putting them behind the 10 6 so they don't fall out. On the opposite side, I'm putting the mirror and using my orange yarn and tapestry needle to just go behind the mirror and secure it. I want it to be able to be removed, but I don't want it to fall out very easily. So I'm just going to tie. the yarn around it and just go back in around. And then just tie a knot. Make sure it's secured down in there well. Then I can just tie a knot and bury the loose yarn ends. After I tie the knot, I'm, before I bury my loose yarn ends, I'm just going to take and tie a knot around the doll as well to keep her in place. Now with the Alice doll, I'm going to use my green yarn and my tapestry needle, but I'm not going to sew her to the hat. I'm just going to place her close to the mirror and I'm just going to loop the yarn through the top. She has a little key ring at the top of her head. I'm just going to loop it through and then tie a knot. Just make sure that you have enough loose yarn end because that way it can be removed later and still be used. It won't be a permanent part of the hat. Just tie one more time. And actually I'm just going to cut the end of that loose yarn end close to the knot. I'm not going to bury it in the hat. Then you can take and tie the other side around the mirror itself. Just tie a knot so around I the mirror. So I tied a knot around the mirror and then I'm just going to cut close to the knot so there's not a loose yarn end. Then you have the little doll. You can tuck the little key, lean, key ring loop right under the ribbon. For the clock, I used my gold elastic cord and I chained 80 with it with my crochet hook. I used my J or six millimeter crochet hook. Then I just took one side, I want this to face the front, so I just took and placed the elastic cord through and fed the chain through and then weaved it around my hat. So here you can see how I'm just kind of taking it and just going right through and then weaving it wherever you want to For weave under it. the hat, I made a chain of 80 and I made two of them, two chains of 80 and sew them so that the ties will go behind the e dog's ears and you can tie them around For the, the backpack, front. you're going to make a buttonhole strap and you make it the same way that you made the ribbon that goes around the hat except you start with a chain of six and then you chain three and then start with a double crochet back cross. So I'm just going to show you here. I have a chain of six I'm going to chain three and then make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook just like we did before. Oops. Then you just make one double crochet in every stitch back across. Okay. 
Then to move up to the next row, you do the same thing that we've done before. You chain three, turn your work, and then make a double crochet into the next stitch over. And you should have seven double crochets or seven stitches for each row. Now for the side buttonhole strap, you're going to make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 rows. For the short strap at the top of the backpack, you're just going to make three rows. To make the buttonhole row, you're going to chain three just like you did before. You're going to turn your work, make a double crochet into the next stitch over. Make a double crochet into the next stitch over. So you have a total of three double crochet. Then you're going to chain one. Skip the next stitch. That will be your buttonhole. And then make a double crochet into the next stitch. So you skipped a stitch. And then that creates a buttonhole. Then you just finish making one double crochet in the last two stitches. So you should have three double crochet on each side of the buttonhole. One, two, three. Buttonhole space. One, two, three. Then go ahead and chain one. Turn your work and just make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And then make one single crochet into every stitch. When you get to the buttonhole stitch, you can go right into the buttonhole stitch. Bring up a loop yarn over and go through both loops for a single crochet and then you just make one single crochet in the three remaining stitches and then you can go ahead and finish off and I usually bring enough through to sew it onto the backpack and then you just need another one of these without the buttonhole just make 14 rows of one double crochet just like this one except for 14 rows without the buttonhole. Then you just place your strap right along the side right on top of underneath on top of the heart but under the queue and then just sew it going in and out and sewing Here's it a close-up of my Queen of Hearts backpack after I've sewn on both straps you can see how I sewed the strap on to the side and then also sewed the button in place for holding the strap on. And then this is how I sewed the top of the little strap that holds it closed and then what the button looks like on the opposite side. And then on the inside I have all the toys and you can just keep it closed by strapping the button onto the back.